Hi guys, called Jibble in here. So today's video is going to be a shorter one. It's more about a worrying sort of progression of a trend I'm seeing. So I know that recently there, during the weeks that I wasn't here and um, because I had lots of stuff going on, I was watching on Twitter and I think there were some new photos of Lilibet. Obviously I won't show them here because I don't agree with, you know, sharing random pictures of people's kids like without the child's consent or the parents consent but yeah so I think I think from what I remember I think Harry was at an event with Lilibet and I would look it up but like I'm I just feel like I, it's not my business <laughs> it's not my business but they were seen out together and obviously like from what we kind of know about Lilibet and Archie anyway and remember that like I think the most footage there is of Archie is mostly from when he was like a little baby and he was like taken as a baby to like royal engagements and then in the documentary which was footage okayed by Harry and Meghan and kind of filmed by them you know and there are the occasional family photographs and things but you know as they're getting older it's becoming more apparent that I mean Lilibet has got red hair she's quite light-skinned um you know we haven't seen properly and also like <laughs> It's not our business. <laughs> I feel weird, like I don't want to be like, what skin tone is the child? Like, let's write it down, let's put it on a chart. But it, it's awakened something really evil in the racists in this country. And I'll tell you my theory about why. And it's not just my theory, I've seen a lot of people say this online. So basically what people are saying, and which I completely agree with, is that I think a lot of the royalists and the monarchists, they hate Harry and Meghan. I don't know if it's conscious or subconscious with them, but I think there's certainly an element of, if you're a royalist, being into bloodline. And believing in that means you've got to believe that the ones in the direct line are sort of superior. Because the whole thing runs on hierarchy rather than merit. So I think a lot of people who are racist are into the royal family, not because they care about the people in it. Again, they use them like pawns or mascots, you know, they don't actually care about their well-being. Um, recently, and this is going to be another video because there's so much of this, it was announced and it was front page news that George will not necessarily have to serve in the armed forces um, before he becomes king. This is a 10 year old, right? And grown adults are, I'll save this for the video because this is one of the things that's made me more angry than anything else, honestly, because that is a 10 year old boy. And what is not gonna happen is this country, right? The people in this country who are so into their royals are not going to guilt a 10 year old boy into joining a profession where he could die, right? No, like no tradition is more important than a child's life. Right, I'm sorry, it's just not. So yeah, they don't see these people as individuals. And we see that with George and Charlotte and Louis because they are enjoyed for their roles, right? How well behaved they are, look, there are all the state occasions. As long as they play into their roles, they're fine with them. You know, it's something that racists, and I'm not saying that all royalists are racists. Like, I have to make that clear. But the royalists that are racists, you know, what is it about that royal family that they feel so attached to? Especially because we, we don't know that much about the individuals within it. And I think it is that idea of, you know, it's classism, it's knowing your place, it's this kind of white family, this ideal sort of setup, right? And that's what the papers are trying to push and the magazines are trying to push, you know, this is the ideal British family and these are the ones who are going to lead us, right? That's how people are conditioned to feel about them. You know, it's like when people are really, really into William and Kate, and you know, they might, I'm not saying all of them, you know, they might have reason, I, I don't really know what the reasons are because Kate doesn't really say much and, you know, William's very absent from a lot of stuff. But you know, if you look, for example, at people who support Harry and Meghan, it's not usually just a sort of, I don't know, they, they can back it up, if that makes sense. Like, they'll say, oh, I agree with this thing, or I like this thing, or I feel bad because they've suffered racism, or I think Harry's brave for standing up to the tabloids. Like, what is it with William and Kate that makes people really want to fight for them? Because we don't know them, and that's not necessarily their fault. You know, the, the kind of system they're in means they're told not to complain or explain, so we don't know them as personalities. So a lot of people who really worship them do it based on what? What exactly is it? It's status, it's the perfect white family, right? I, in my opinion, I think that's what it is for some people. Now, we all know that, you know, from comments being made about Archie's skin colour before he was born, and we don't know the situation of that, you know, or why the comment was made, etc. But people have been anxious, or they were anxious, about the skin colour of those children. And even if, you know, 
let's just say the person didn't ask it out of a sense of actual racism that was coming from themselves, we all are aware, let's be honest, and we were aware, that if Meghan and Harry's children had been darker skinned, it was going to pose a problem. Not because there was a problem with those children, but because the system they were existing within was not built for people of colour. It's just not. And the sort of people that they are courting to be fans of the royal family and keep it going, a lot of them are racist, right? So they knew that would be a problem. We don't know why the person asked that about the colour. I can understand that being a valid concern. It's not something that, that ever should have been raised. You know, the system is ridiculous. But from a PR perspective, you've got a brand which a lot of the demographics you're going for with this are very, like, Britain and white people and send out the refugees and, you know, this is a white family. Those are the people they're playing to. So obviously there would have been anxiety about Archie's skin colour. Whether or not that was based in racism, I don't know. But certainly from a PR perspective, I mean, it's going to be a worry, right? It's the same worry as, you know, if one of the kids, you know, George or Charlotte or Louis turns out to be gay or trans or something like that, you know, that is also going to pose a PR problem for the firm. Right? Because their whole thing is conservative, old British values. Like, when I say conservative, I don't necessarily mean, like, politically, like, the Tory party. I mean, like, old values. Harking back to a better, a better, in their opinion, time, right? Before wokeness. And they lean on that so much in their branding. But it wasn't just, you know, coming from people. I think it would be naive to think that, you know, everyone was good, well-intentioned and everyone was just thinking, oh, it will be difficult for him in that system. And, you know, oh, I hope the public aren't racist to him, which of course they would be because, you know, there's a lot of racism here. There are a lot of people, I think, who, who really wanted him and Lily to be darker skinned. Now, obviously, to normal individuals, the colour of their skin is irrelevant. I don't mean that it's not important because obviously, you know, when people say things like, oh, I don't see colour, like, it's like, well, you know, okay, don't treat people differently, but that kind of often leads to people dismissing experiences of racism, right? It's like when people will see Megan face loads of racism and then they'll go, oh, but I don't see colour. And it's like, okay, but you have to acknowledge that she's having a different experience because she's a woman of colour, right? Otherwise it's just denying someone's reality. But I'll tell you honestly why I think a lot of people wanted that, because I think they were racist and they would have seen that as a punishment. Honestly, I think they would have thought... I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, like, let's be completely honest. I mean, Megan is, you know, she's quite light-skinned. I think she's obviously a woman of colour, but she's quite light-skinned anyway. But look, I'm, so I'm sorry, but, like, <laughs> Diana... Harry's mother, beautiful. Doria, so beautiful. Those are two beautiful and graceful women. But you know that these people wanted Archie and Lily to be darker because they wanted them to be more associated with Doria and Meghan and less from Harry and the family, right? They wanted that as a punishment. And I think that, you know, the way these people use Diana as well, like they still, a lot of them are really into Diana, which is odd because they treat Harry and Meghan the same way that Diana was treated, right? It's like they they haven't learned anything from her situation. And they really want to go with the whole idea that Diana, her spirit and everything, like, not, not as in literally her spirit, I mean as in, like, you know, the parts of her that people loved, they always like to assign that to William and Kate, right? And those kids. That is what they want. Even though, like, Diana is a part of all of those grandchildren. All of them. George, Charlotte, Louis, Archie, Lily. All of them. Like, all of them. She's part of all of them. They really wanted it to be that there was, like, a visual element that allowed people to put Archie and Lily in a different box. Honestly, I think that's what they wanted. I think they wanted those children to receive the racism so they could be dismissed. That's my honest opinion. And they wanted that kind of Spencer element right? They wanted that Spencerness to go to William's side. And it's kind of ridiculous because, first of all, like, you know, when it comes to what you inherit from people, and again, like, Diana's love will be, if she was here, she would have loved all her grandkids, right? A hundred percent. She was a really loving person. She loved kids. She didn't discriminate. But it's interesting because the William and Kate fans go for the ideas of Diana that ultimately in her life she tried to escape or push back against, right? So it's like early Diana, that stuff. You know, it's it's interesting because I, I do think that, you know, Megan is, is a lot more in spirit uh, and personality a lot more like Diana. 
honestly. And I think some people are so put off by the fact that she's a person of colour, right? That she's a woman of colour, that they can't see it. That she's actually going through some similar struggles but on a whole other level because there's racism as well. But it was meant to be George and Charlotte and Louis, right? They were meant to be blonde haired and blue eyed and be this Aryan ideal for people. And yet the Spencer genes have gone through Harry. And let's not forget that, you know, Meghan's family as well, her mum, Doria, beautiful Doria, but there's also her dad and his side of the family. So there's kind of reddish hair in the family. I think Meghan's hair is kind of got like a, when the sun shines on it, there's kind of like a reddish, under kind of colour to it, it's really pretty. And I think people are right in saying that the royalists, the racists, are fuming because Lily has ended up with Diana's colouring, right? Lily has got blue eyes and she's got like reddish hair. The Cambridge children, I believe, all have brown eyes. I haven't personally looked, but this is what I've seen. Which again, irrelevant, doesn't make any difference. But these are the sort of things that will rile racists because racists don't make any sense, right? It's not about logic. It's all about appearances and power. And to them, it will be absolutely, and it is. It is enraging them. It is eating them up to think that Lily, who is a, a mixed race girl, right? That's Megan's daughter. That is Doria's granddaughter. And to think that she has something of Diana in her and that it's not gonna be so easy to dismiss her. I think they feel like that has somehow been stolen from the Cambridge children, in my opinion, right? I think that the Cambridge children in their minds were meant to be these perfect Aryan children because that's what they're meant to represent. I mean, the Spencer genes are very strong. And I also think it annoys them because in terms of roles and how they're selling the story, they want to align their most popular royal or ex-royal, Diana, with William and Kate. It's much harder to do because, you know, her story aligns a lot more with Harry and Meghan. Harry obviously is a lot like his mum. Meghan has... I often think that only... I'm only talking about the roles they have in public. I don't know in private. But Kate seems to be leaning into that role of early Diana before she found herself. And Megan seems to be a lot like later Diana, after she did. And I think it's really interesting that William and Harry have gone for women who have those elements of their mother. And I, I, you know, I think that's a testament to how much they loved her and how much they do still love her. But, but these people are so, so angry. They're losing their minds, right? They're acting like, oh, they've got body double. Because, you know, how could it possibly be that this child who is mixed race, we are not you know, we're not seeing her as dark enough and that's difficult for us because we need to get rid of her. Oh no, she's light skinned. Oh no, oh no, she's got blue eyes. That's meant to belong to the Cambridge children. That's meant to belong to us, not these outsiders. That's why we're getting all these weird conspiracy theories that, you know, Lilibet doesn't exist, okay? Right, they actually feel like in their minds because they are so far gone with the racism, I feel like they think that how could they possibly have a child with blue eyes, more blue than Charlotte and George and Louis, because to them, you know, blue eyes, blonde hair, that's the ideal, right? That's what they love so much. It's kind of Nazi-ish, isn't it? You know, the way they think. And how dare Lily have that? How dare Lily have that? She was meant to be nothing like Diana. She was meant to be wiped off the map. She was meant to be like Doria so that they could like push her aside. And again, to normal people, you know, I think Lily would be lucky either way. You know, if she looks like her mom or her dad or either of her grandmothers, she'd be very lucky. But they are so, so angry. So angry. Also, I want to say that they are now picking on totally random things because they're foaming at the mouth, right? They're so angry. They're so angry about this idea. They can't vocalise it, though. They're not able to just say it. They're not able to be so avert in their racism and admit it and just say, wow, um, she actually looks like a Spencer. I uh, don't like that because we needed her to be dark skinned so we could use racism against her. Hmm. Um, yeah, we don't like that. They wouldn't say that. They know that that would be taking it too far. A lot of what they do is implied, right? A lot of this stuff is implied. So they realized that in the picture that was out there, Lily was wearing socks, right? She was, she was in a dress and she was wearing socks. And they started making up random reasons to attack the child and her parents, right? By saying things like, oh, Oh, I thought Megan said that, you know, when Kate wanted them to wear tights, I thought Megan said that they weren't going to wear tights. And it's like, there's a difference between tights and socks, first of all, right? Like, just in terms of, if you're someone who wears tights or socks, if it's hot, what are you going to wear, right? If possible, 
you're not going to wear tights because it's too hot. So you'll find them picking on a load of weird things that don't make sense. And you might be thinking, wow, that's weird. They're, they're spending so much time talking about this tights and socks things. Like, that's so weird. The reason they're doing that is because they can't say what they want to say. They can't say that they're so angry that their Aryan ideal, which they prize. Normal people don't even prize that. Like, normal people are just overjoyed to have happy and healthy children but they're so angry they're so so angry that Meghan and Harry have got a child a daughter with red hair and blue eyes I also think it makes it more difficult in terms of what their plan is in the future what they're going to do because I think they would love to act like oh actually Harry's not the father you know that would add to Meghan's villain arc right I think that that's what they would really want to do and they can't do it they can't do it so yeah, um, let me know if you've seen this going on as well. Um, it's so frustrating because you know it's racism, right? You can see it and you know that's what it is. But it's so hard to, like, they know what they're doing. You know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. But they won't say it, so it's quite difficult. But it's pretty obvious. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you really soon. All right, love you. Bye.